Okay, this is the Essex Lopresti classification of calcaneal fractures. It's one of the many classifications you need to know for calcaneal fractures. Um, it's a high yield topic in our field, okay? So in order to remember that, I have uh, this sextal, this electronic sextal, because Essex, to me, kind of looks like E-sex or electronic sex. So there's a little sexy hook for you to remember, okay? And in addition, I have uh, the two types, tongue type and joint depression type, and this, they're associated with pictures here on the right. So. Uh, tongue type, I have this sexy tongue, and on the joint depression type, I have the depressed joint smoking Rick and Morty, if you know that cartoon, okay? So just some weird hooks to help you remember. Now, um, the main point, the high yield of this, you have to know, is that the classification is essentially based on the secondary fracture line, okay? So in tongue type and joint depression type, they both have the same primary fracture line vertically, um, from the, uh, from the, through the posterior facet of the STJ down through the inferior calcaneus. But if you can look closely, you see the second fracture line, the secondary fracture, and the tongue type is a horizontal fracture that exits out the posterior calcaneus. That is the hallmark of tongue type. You need to know that, okay? I've been tricked on that before. You need to know it. Joint depression type has a vertical or oblique uh, secondary fracture line that exits there out the uh, superior calcaneus, just posterior to the talus, okay? In addition, uh, you need to know that the uh, mechanism of injury of each is slightly different. So for tongue type, you can see that arrow at the t on the talus is causing a vertical, uh, vertical force, so an axial load falling off a ladder directly onto the foot. The joint depression type has more of an anterior-posterior force, okay? So um, some sort of uh, moving forward and landing on the foot quickly, okay? Now, uh, in addition to that, I have on the bottom right of each section, I have a uh, superior view of a calcaneal model. And you can see in both types, there is a fracture through the posterior facet of the subtalar joint. Now, this is also uh, something you can uh, use to use the Sanders classification. Just know that this one also has this same fracture through there. Um, but it creates a different free lateral piece of the calcaneus. So in the top one, you have that long tongue-shaped uh, uh, fragment piece, which on the lateral view in the main image you can see is also kind of tongue-shaped. So it's lifting up. And on the joint depression type on the bottom right, you can see that there's um, a smaller displaced joint depression type uh, lateral process fragment, okay? Now, uh, on the bottom left, I have some writing I hope you can see, but it's just some of the high yields. So, um, essentially, these primary fractures are caused by the lateral process of the talus. That's number one. The secondary fracture is the hallmark of the classification, which you need to know. Okay, um, it creates a free lateral piece of the posterior facet. Uh, the calcaneus is commonly collapsed into varus. Okay, so that is a high yield as well. Um, you need to know that, and you need to know that thou shalt not varus after fixation. You should not be in varus. Okay, uh, and then commonly the calcaneus will be shortened and widened. So they're going to ask you, how do you know if your fixation is correct after surgery? You need to check that the height and the width are back in place, um, and you also need to check that you're not in varus, okay? 75% uh, of calcaneal fractures are intraarticular, okay? And then in addition to that, since this is a um, high mechanism injury, uh, you need to check fractures of the talus, the L1, femoral neck, tibial, and tibial plateau, okay, because those, uh, those forces can translate to fractures in other area of the body, areas of the body that can go missed. And then, uh, as I mentioned in other videos, if you watched the row classification video, um, tongue type translates to a row type 4. However, uh, you need to use Essex Lopresti to, to instead. It's the preferred way. And joint depression type is the same as row 5, okay? Um, in addition to that, you might be confused why there's 1A and 2B. I've seen both uh, tongue type called type 1 or type A, and I've seen joint depression type called type 2 or type B, okay? Just a, just a little note there. Call it tongue type and joint depression type to be safe. And that's it.